Hi, this is Sickle Yield, and I'm here to talk to you about getting started with iRay. Today I'm going to walk you through creating a scene. So first I'm going to look at a couple of settings in Daz Studio 4.8 Pro Public Build, which is the one that contains iRay right now. I'm going to go to my Render Settings tab and make sure that in the editor that iRay is my engine. In the Advanced Settings, you can see that I have it set to Photo Reel here. And I have all of, I'm going to go ahead and check all of my devices today. You can see I've got two GTX 980s. Those, that is the relevant criterion in the render speed you're going to be seeing today. The two 740s are not nearly as fast, don't have as many CUDA cores, and one of them is actually basically running my monitor right now. Adding the CPU adds a small boost to speed for most people, not very much of one. All right, in the render settings, I'm also going to go to environment. This is where you would add an HDR to this environment map channel. It's set to dome and scene right now, which we want because that allows it to be lit by this environment setup as well as by the scene. You add the HDR to the environment map channel here if you have one. You can get a number of free HDRs online. Down here, you can also set a scene node or any object in the scene to be the source of your sunlight. You can set latitude, longitude, date and time and other things. I'm not particularly going to be using these today because I want to talk about mesh lights and photometrics. So we'll save that for another day. For now I'm going to leave this at basically its, its current default settings. And I'm going to go over here to my preferences. In Edit Preferences Scene, you can decide if Daz Studio will generate a default camera when you create a new scene. Mine is set to do that. And now I'm going to look at the settings of that default camera because when you're rendering with iRay, if you have a camera on, when you create the camera, by default it creates a headlamp as part of the camera settings. Right now headlamp mode is set to auto, which will cause the headlamp to light the scene at all times, whether in preview or in render. I am going to turn that to off because I don't want the headlamp, which is very bright, interfering with my scene. So now that I've got that set up, I'm ready to go to Props and Stonemason. And today I'm going to be working with this lovely Sci-Fi Interior 2015. There we are. I can move my camera around to look at the stairs here. You can see the lights that are on the ceiling. Those are going to become relevant momentarily. All right, now in the scene tab, I'm having a little bit of lag here because of the amount of geometry that's just been loaded. There we go. I'm going to delete the octane render scene data because we're not rendering in octane. We don't need that right now. I'm going to use shift click to select all of these items so that I can now convert them to iRay's shader base. You can render without doing this, but it will look better if you do. Again, I'm having a little bit of lag with large geometry here. Here we go, surfaces. And I'm going to use shift click again to select all of the things in this tab. And I'm going to go down to my shader presets and iRay Uber defaults. I added this exclamation point to bump that to the top of the list. Normally it'll be down here in, in the letter I section. And I'm going to click on iRay Uber Base. And it should convert all of these materials to iRay materials. Now something that it will do with items that by default had an ambient value of white is it should convert that white ambient value into an emissive value. So let's look at our sky dome that came with this set. You can't see the sky dome in the scene here. If I go to the perspective view and use the frame button here, there we go. It's very large. So I'll go back to the default camera, look at my sky dome, and it did convert to a white emission color, which should make that an emissive light in our scene. It has a temperature of zero, which is not as good. So I'm going to turn that into 6500 for a nice neutral colored light. Uh, very low temperatures will be very warm and orange or yellow. 
very high temperatures will be very cold and blue. So that's a nice neutral value there. You can find charts online of different types of lights and their emission temperatures. This is a real value with real world relevance because this is a physically based renderer. Two-sided light I'm going to leave on so that the dome will project light in both directions. Emission profile is not relevant to us right now. That's mostly relevant in cases where you're dealing with a lampshade that's next to a wall. But you can download free IES profiles online if you want to, to try that. Luminance, this is a tiny, tiny value actually. So I'm going to set this to lumens. And I'm going to add a lot of zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Because we are simulating a very bright light very far from our scene. And then I'm going to do a quick test render here. I'm thinking that I might be lagged by having the CPU checked. So I'm going to uncheck that and see if it speeds up my scene manipulation here. All right, let's look at our render. One of the things about iRay rendering is it is progressive. It will do some iterations and start to show a picture while it's still at 0%. In fact, the longest time your render will spend will be at uh, below 0 and above 90%. Between 90 and 100, it may not actually look that different because it's refining small areas of the scene. So when you're using doing a test render or a quick render, you probably don't want to let it converge beyond 90%. Right now, I'm just doing a quick light check to see that my scene is lit. And as you can see, it is. In fact, these reflective objects are sort of reflecting the sky dome off the tops of them. All right, I'm going to stop that. And I might actually even turn that sky dome down a little bit so that the other lights in my scene will have more of an effect. So I'm going to deduct a couple of zeros here. Do another quick test render. You have a lot of different choices of luminance units here, including even, for example, watts. Lumens is sort of what I learned with, and it's what I want to use. There we go. I want to dim overall light from that sky dome. Close that. Because I also want to use my other lights in the scene and convert those to emitters. So. I'm going to go through the scene over here and look for things that are labeled light. Stonemason is really good about this. It's usually pretty easy to find which objects in his scene are meant to be lights. All right, here we go. Let's use the down lights here. And here's the down lights material. And I'm just going to scroll up to the emission channel. That, that did not convert for some reason. So I'm going to click that to change it to the iRay Uber base. There we go down here to the emission color. And you can see this is why just clicking this is not enough, because the settings that we get for that are not um, going to work very well in our scene. I'm going to make those about 100,000 in lumens, temperature about 6,500. And I'm going to change the emission color to white. You really only want to use this emission color value when you're at a neutral temperature and you really want a colored light that's a color you can't get with just the temperature, usually purple or green. But, all right, let's, I'm going to create another camera so that I can look at the floor. There's camera one. And I will have to turn off camera one's headlamp, just as I did with the default camera. Yep, change that from auto to off mode. I'm hoping that as time goes by, they will give us an ability to generate cameras that are just already in off mode. All right. Let's see how that looks. This is, after all, this is a public beta. So there are things that will be changed and improved as we go along. It's already pretty awesome, but it can always get better. Here we go. Now you can see little circles of light, the little circle of light on the floor there from my overhead lights. All right, and I will cancel that. Back to my default camera. 
and the overall scene will actually get a little bit lighter from the inclusion of those overhead lights because light will bounce around the scene just as if it were real light as opposed to a 3D light where when you aim a light at something it pretty much only lights that thing there's not much scatter okay now I'm ready to add a figure to my scene and I have saved out a figure ahead of time in order to avoid unnecessary nudity on YouTube so I'm going to merge here we go this uses the Koichi character K-O-I-C-H-I from Daz 3D and April YHS's Zior hair and the Darkon armor by Mech 4D there we go and I want to sort of use a camera angle similar to this one so I'm going to switch back to translate mode and drag a G2M over here in front of the camera. There we go. And I will move the camera down here so that he's in view and I will control right click on this tilt control to make it look a little bit more dynamic. A little bit of a Dutch angle and I'm going to apply a basic pose to him from my library now some of you are thinking I should be using smart content right now and I probably should here we go but I'm not there we are and I'm going to move him sort of to one side here also giving a sort of a sense of movement to the scene rather than just having it centered right on him as though I were trying to sell the entire set and not just for example what he's wearing alright now I will select the hair, the gloves, and Genesis 2 male and I will convert all of those to eye shaders you really really want to convert any human or any creature with a skin rather than just use the headlamp and go straight to render with those because they really can look so much better with eye ray shaders and you can avoid the dreaded sort of unbiased skin syndrome where your reflections and refractive objects look gorgeous and your humans look dead and scary All right. There we go. Now I'm going to select Genesis 2 male again. And I'm going to use Daz's material that they've created. Now Daz's material uses one of the default textures that came with Genesis 2 male base. But I want to continue using Koichi's texture. I just want to have this better shader set up with it. So what I'm going to do is go to Genesis 2 male materials iray and I'm going to hold down the control key and double click the iray optimized Genesis 2 male mat this dialog pops up surfaces all and I'm going to change images to ignore and accept and now it has changed Koichi's material to match this nice material but it has kept his own skin settings which is great here you can see it's got this nice transmitted color setting at about 0.3 for SSS amount and the translucency color is set at about 0.5 sort of this nice peachy color he doesn't have maps in that channel and it looks like he didn't come with an SSS map either so I'm going to turn down the translucency value to about 0.2 and then I will try my render again real quick I know this won't look right because I haven't added any rim lights yet one of the wonderful fun things about iRay is that many principles you use for lighting with it are much more like the principles you would use for lighting a scene for photography where 3D light sort of had more of its own rules that you would have to learn that are very different from that alright rendering 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 you can see it's taking longer now to get 
to that point of showing anything on the screen because we've added an object with translucency and SSS. Things that involve transmitted color slow eye ray down more than anything else. You can add things that are refractive and reflective all day long and it just won't do a thing to your render speed, but as soon as you add something with translucency or SSS, things start to slow down. All right, there we go. Now he's not really picked out much from his background because it's dark and he's wearing dark clothes, so I'm going to cancel that. And I'm going to go to my camera one again and use it to frame Genesis 2 male. I often do in a scene use a camera to create lights and different define their direction. Here we go. I go to create new photometric spotlight and apply active viewport transforms. And now when I select my photometric spotlight, I can frame G2M again. There we go. And I will rotate it around so that it lights him from the side and slightly behind. This is going to be my rim light. Create a nice rim of light that picks him out from the background. And you can see now in the preview, it's gotten suddenly dark because perceives photometric lights as lights in a way that it doesn't perceive mesh lights when it's lighting the preview. I'm hoping that will be fixed or changed in an upcoming version. Here we go. The luminous flux is set very low here, so I'm going to add, add zeros to that. I'll leave the temperature in Kelvin and this the same. With a photometric light, we will access the settings here in the parameters instead of in the surfaces tab, of course. There's the light tint, there's the intensity. We don't really use intensity in the same way as you would in 3D light. If you want the light to be brighter or dimmer, you're actually going to control that with the luminous flux. All right, let's see how that looks. If you find that you're trying to light a scene and everything looks dark because you've turned off the camera headlamps, you can add a couple of photometric spotlights or point lights to your scene that are very dim and it won't mess up your overall lighting scheme, but it will make it possible to actually see things in your preview. That's a bit of a workaround, but it does work. All right, there we go. Now we've got a very bright rim on Genesis 2 male there. If I was doing this as a promotional image, I would basically englobe him with these photometric spotlights. I would just add a lot of them at low values. Not just to light the preview, but also to bounce more light around the scene and make it go faster. You can see we're at 25% after about a minute there. All right, that's going to go for a little while, so I'm going to cancel it. Hopefully that gives you an idea uh, what it takes to start rendering with iRay how to convert your materials and shaders, and how to light with both mesh lights and photometric points or spots. Thank you very much, and happy rendering.